All right, everybody, Idaho Ambassador back. We are currently filming with Argos Productions at Lost Grove Brewery. And today I have Randy Johnson. Hey, y'all. He's running for District 17, the Idaho House. In CA. CA. And we are going to banter with him a little bit about what's going on, what he kind of wants to work on his platform with. And from that, I'm just gonna ask you, Randy, if you'll give us a little bit of an introduction sure. on who you are, where you come from, Yeah. what's your deal? Yeah, well, you know, uh, I've been in Boise since about 2000. I graduated high school from a, a Jerome. Oh, and, Jerome. You know, oh, yeah, that was, <laughs> it was wild. I, I actually grew up in a, a, a Southern California, and when I was 13, my parents moved up here. And being in a big city of millions of people, I've never seen tractors or cows. So when we moved into oh my gosh. Jerome, Idaho, the but fields. of all places, Jerome. Oh, of all places, Jerome. <laughs> and I see the, the, uh, all the dairies. Are these wild cows? I have no <laughs> idea. I mean, I've never been experiencing this before. Yeah. But, you know, I've been in Boise since about 2000, and um, I've been really active in, in, in the community. But, you know, wanting to run for office has been something I've thought about for a long time, and it feels like this is the time. Yeah. Uh, you know, I'm a, I'm a dad of two boys, Oliver and Quincy. They're, uh, they're, they're so cute. They are cute. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, they are four and six, and they, they go to school. They go to public school, Hillcrest Elementary. Okay, yeah. And, you know, that's really important to me is having, uh, worrying about education. I'm on the PTO. Uh, I'm the, the, the popcorn guy. I show up every Friday and pop like 300 bags of popcorn at the oh fundraiser. Gosh, I remember that. Do yeah. Weren't they like a quarter a bag or They're something? They're 50 cents now. Oh, okay. But yeah, I remember yeah, it was yeah, like, we'll oh, it's that. Friday's popcorn. Day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and Sorry. it's great. And the kids Flashbacks. love it. Oh, no. And the kids, <laughs> they, they absolutely, they really look forward to it. And so... You know, I'm really involved in education issues. Um, my kids are young, so you know, pre-K is really big for me right now, and so is uh, just well, making sure we have strong public education. Real quick for me, sure. so that everybody knows, yeah. District 17. Mm -hmm. What what is that like? Oh, What's that boundary? Good. So it's right. on. It's you're up where I'm building the container park. So you're on the bench. Yeah, I'm on the bench. But how far does that go? It's kind of a weird boundary. So it follows along the. Uh, the southern end is the freeway. Okay. That kind of is the boundary. For the northern boundary, it's going to be the Boise River. So this okay, is here. Yeah. Lost Grove is within that district. So it's oh, Boise yeah. State. And it has a small section of the mall and uh, that way, just a, a teeny bit going that way, and then a small portion up of Vista. Okay. So it's kind of a, it's a teardrop shape with a couple of... Um, but you've got some, some meaty things in there. I mean, it's big. It's a yeah. working class a, a neighborhood. It's um, mostly residential and so I mean it's people that really want to have good representation they, they well, need you've got education. a lot of growth in that we do have a lot of growth. specific yeah. area I mean like this popping up the business next door popping up mm -hmm. where we're going up at the, on the bench and you're actually for the Central Bench Neighborhood Association mm -hmm. you're on that board right I'm the, the president of the, the president board for of that the board. correct and I mean that's again like being involved in the community what really makes me want to 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 take it a step further you know being a president yeah. of a neighborhood association it's fun. I mean, it, yeah. sometimes I'm wondering, what the heck am I doing? <laughs> I've been to some of those meetings. <laughs> know, right? I've been to some of those meetings, and I'm like, really? Yeah. How do you put up with these people? Like, I know you can't say that, but I could say that. I was like, these no, people are I mean, crazy. Sometimes it's it's interesting, but the positive things we're able to do. You know, we're building yeah. a park right now, a, a Franklin Park. And that's on the corner of like Rose Hill and no, uh, or, Fr Franklin and Orchard. Orchard, Franklin Orchard, Orchard across where, from like the Fred Meyer. Across from the Fred Meyer, okay. where the old. Um, Franklin School used to be, oh, yeah. and that was there for like 105 years. It was a, a pillar of the community. That's where people would vote. That's where dancing was. I mean, there were basketball courts. It really was yeah. a pillar. And when the school district decided that they didn't want to renovate it anymore, they tore it down and it left it as a big weed field. And yeah. so, as an, a neighborhood, we got together. We worked with the city of Boise, mm -hmm. who purchased part of that land, and they're breaking ground right now. They're out there building a park, about a three and a half acre park, Franklin oh, that's gonna Park. It's going to be so cool. Oh, that it's, it's going to be great. We have about half of our neighborhood just in that small area that will be able to get to that main park without having to cross a major street. That's and awesome. those are the type of things that, that people really love in their community, and we really don't have on the bench. We have big parks. We have yeah. Bora Park, we have Casha Park, but some of these smaller parks, and neighbor, it, it's a gem that I'm, I'm excited well, to be it, able to And I feel on. like it breaks that area up. I'm going to drink some beer, too, if that's You okay. do. Okay. Which one are you drinking? Oh, I'm drinking the Awkward Hugs. Uh, it's a collaboration between Las Grove and uh, Payette. <laughs> it's really good. 
Uh, but I feel like for where that park's going in, it's going to break up because like, I, we're building the, the shipping container park on the bench, right? right? And I think that it's, everyone thinks I'm a little crazy because of the location, but I think the bench is going to explode and I think mm -hmm. it already is. But I think a lot of it's all these little strip malls, like not knocking the strip malls, but it's like, mm -hmm. it's all just so old school it's and an old yeah, area. No, it's... And it's like, that's like a nice little green pop, like hub for Boise mm -hmm. on the bench. Yeah. Instead of it just being another building complex. Yeah, it's growing. I mean, right now the entire Treasure Valley is about 600,000 people. It's insane. And by 2040, we're expected Don't to get to 1.2 million me. people. Oh it's gosh. growing, oh right? And so we need to be able to have people who are looking to the future, not just looking at the present to um, uh, what can we solve from the past, but looking how we can find the problems of the future and be able to hit those now. Because we yeah. don't want to look like a Salt Lake or a... a a Denver or a Phoenix where yeah. they sprawl and when you want to finally put in mass transit it's impossible. You're just like how are we even going to go about this? Yeah I mean it costs 30 well, times more in some And in some we cities. have you and I briefly talked about this before but like what is like the median age of the house right now? It's like 70 or something like that. Oh the house? Uh, yeah. Oh it's old. It's, it's like it's old and old school. We are the second oldest I believe if I remember the stats right. Yeah. Uh, state house. In, in the country <laughs> yeah. and it's like 67, 68 years old. Yeah. It's, and so the, the perceptions and the, just how they view the world is mm -hmm. way different than what younger people are and what, and, and me being a, a progressive candidate running as a Democrat, I mean, it's, we're not that progressive in I mean, even for Democrats, state. you're right. not that like progressive because right. we are in such a right state. Yeah. But I, I think that it's important to realize like that if we don't put people who can believe in innovation, mm -hmm making the decisions, we're kind of out of luck. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, With we have over half of the state house that doesn't even believe in climate change. And so if you're looking at solving the problems of the future mm -hmm. and you don't even believe in that, yeah. how do you go forward from that? I mean, I, we want we want people, we want politicians that are looking to 2050 yeah. and not the 1950s. Well, and you know, I mean, well, the other thing is, crazy. is like your belief is your belief. Right. But what we, you and I talked about before was, mm -hmm. Uh, because of your belief is that you're essentially limiting the education within the state, right? right? Which then in turn means that our, our kids or our people coming out of our school system are no longer candidates for certain positions. Yeah, no, it's true. Because they haven't been taught those things. Mm -hmm. So it's, I believe that at least personally, it's yeah. like within education, it's like you can be taught whatever it is that you, you know, need to know right. and your belief can stem from what you've been educated with. Right. But don't just hold back information. Yeah. Yeah. And, and we want to set up our students and our children, I want to set up my children, yeah. for, for a future where they are going to be hireable and not just, you know, being ranked a, a, a 48th in the country. You know, I don't want that to yeah. be the metric in which they're judged on. Well, I, mean, and, I mean, like, how much are we putting into, like, you know, prisons versus our education? I think we talked about that as well, didn't we? Yeah, and... and there's ways that you can cut the, the prison budgets. And I mean, you, you look at spending just a little bit more on a, a pre-K, a, a, a pre-kindergarten, preschool programs, mm -hmm. a quality program where, um, and you do this statewide, it is proven that students who are in quality pre-K programs are 70% less likely to be incarcerated. So it's not gonna, it's not gonna solve the overcrowding now. Yeah. But that is looking to the future. If we can spend, for every $1 we spend now on pre-K programs, mm -hmm. we're saving, I've read anywhere from 13 to $30. That's oh a gosh. pretty good investment. Yeah, that's and, insane. And be able to project that forward, they do better in, in school, and they do better with getting jobs, uh, reading scores, and we'll see our whole, our whole area, our whole state will just be jumped up. Well, and I feel like uh, obviously adding a little bit more to our education system mm -hmm. in whatever capacity that is mm -hmm. gives us a little bit more credit credibility nationwide. I yeah. mean, I know when I leave the state, you know, it's they're like, oh, you're from Idaho. It's like, yeah, but we're not all a bunch of ignorant hicks. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like right. now everybody wants to move here, but they still have this mentality that we they still think we're Ohio. Yeah. And they still think both of us are crazy. Yeah. They're just like, oh, you guys don't really know anything up there. And it's like, actually, we come from pretty good set of minds but it's also changing a little bit of the view outwardly that we're not just an ignorant society that you know isn't properly educated yeah. that's huge it is huge and i mean we have we have about 40 percent of idaho students going into boise state right now mm -hmm. who have to take 025 math and english classes oh, wow. and so it's you know 
are we really setting them up for success? We have great teachers all across the state. We have people who care for students, but we need our, our politicians and our state house and our governor, and even all the way up to the president's office in order to really make this a priority. And you know, we can't, there's not a lot I can do on the federal level, but there's a lot I can do on the state level. And that's what I really want to focus on, is be able to make us great. You know, we were, yeah. we were founded by pioneers. We were a pioneer founded state. And we can still be pioneers. We can take that enthusiasm and that, that hope and that, that, I don't know what the hell's around that next corner, yeah. but we're just going to check it out and we're going to do it. And we are the damn American dream. We are. We <laughs> really are. And yeah. yeah, we're pretty fortunate to be able to, to be in the state too. Where what do is. you, do you have any uh, stance like on your platform or do you have anything built in that in regards to like small businesses or startups or entrepreneurship? Is there anything that you really heavily touch on any of that or is that not one of the, your bigger uh, like pillars right now? You know, it's not a major pillar, but I have been meeting with the small businesses around mm -hmm. my, around my area. I met with you. I met with yeah. some great people at a, a Vinyl. They're a, a high tech firm. Yeah. And just trying to figure out like w what are the tools that that um, I'll keep them here. Um, and I want to know why they come here too. Yeah. You know, you, you hear often that it's, it's about the taxes. About, uh, and everyone I've talked to, it's not about the taxes. It's mm -hmm. about quality of life and it's about where they want to be. Like they yeah, love the to be here. It is. Yeah. And so, you know, how can we foster that, you know? And being able to, to build upon that, we're going to invite more people to stay here and to mm -hmm. build and to innovate. And we need we need our government to be able to keep track. We also need too. our government to participate as well, we, we I do. think. Yeah, they need know. to keep track and participate yeah. in order for us to be successful because that's sure. what we love about being here. Yeah. yeah. Well, I've talked to, I mean, as you know, I have mm -hmm. many friends that are in different businesses, but I've also talked to them like, what are your, what's hindered you from getting started? Or what was your, like, what was the biggest feat to overcome in those types mm -hmm. of things? And I constantly get the, you know, the, the reaction <laughs> negatively towards like the city or the, the way that they have everything structured or mm -hmm. the fact that like one person gets one answer and another person gets another answer right. or egregious fines or fees. And yeah. it's like, you also have to help small business flourish if you really right. want this place to grow. Yeah. And having people that will pay attention to that mm -hmm. and being, being willing to innovate in order to mm -hmm. really figure out this is how we, maybe we have always done that but our whole our whole economy or it's it's not not ag anymore yeah it's not based on ag anymore it, and so we need to be able to figure out ways to, in order to to still support that because it is an important and it's it's part of our culture it's part of our Absolutely, heritage yeah but we can't just be stuck at looking at that and yeah, yeah being willing to to work with people that want to innovate and well, and I love one of the things I love about like you is that you you're so willing to like actually go talk to people, mm -hmm. and like we talked about earlier, it's like you go door knocking. Yeah. I mean, you go door knocking. First yeah. off, whether that's sales or politics, like door knocking is insane, man. That's intense. It you know it makes me nervous sometimes, but um, it's fun. I really love it. I've yeah. knocked over 500 doors already within the oh district. My God. And I've never had anybody shut the door on me. I've never been scared off. Yeah. Um, some people say, you know, hey, I'm making dinner right now. I can't talk to you. But most of the time, mm -hmm. people are just, they're happy to have somebody who wants to ask. Actually to talk listen. to them. Exactly. What, yeah. What issues are important to you? Like, that's what I want. I'm not going to tell you, this is what I'm going to do. And just tell you, this is what I'm going to do. This is what yeah. I'm going to do. You mean you're but, not going to make false promises? Right. <laughs> you know, I, what, what, what should I be talking about? Mm -hmm. And, you know, and from that, I've known going to, to the doors, people... The number one issue, everyone wants to talk about education. Mm -hmm. And for me, that's big to me anyway. Yeah. Um, healthcare is another one that a lot of people want to talk about. You know, there are a lot of people who don't have coverage with healthcare. Mm -hmm. uh, we have 75,000 people right now who are within the gap that aren't covered either. They, they don't qualify for uh, subsidies under the Obamacare mm -hmm. or they don't have a, a, a Medicaid. Uh, so there's 75 people who don't have insurance. They can't figure out how to pay for it. And these aren't people that are not working. They're working. They just can't afford to get it. Yeah. And it was just, we can't even have a hearing on how we cover those people. Well, that I think there's even, house. there's even a point to be made on that in regards to like what you're truly paying people. Right. Like I know Rochelle and I have mm -hmm. a, you know, we have a little bakery and we hired our first employee and that mm -hmm. was a re it was a really intense discussion for us because it was he's our he's our biggest expense, mm -hmm. but we were like okay we feel that we are going to pay him a fair living wage yeah and we're not going to hire an employee until yeah. we can and he's your biggest asset he's too. our biggest asset yeah. and and you know it's like 
at what point is it that you just keep offering people seven twenty five an hour? You know they can't make a living off that. Yeah. Certainly can't pay for health insurance yeah. with that. And people know that. I mean, that's the third thing at the, the door. You know, I, I've been asked a lot, is it transportation? Is it open space? Which is very important to us, but it's yeah. a, a livable wage. That's the third thing people talk about when I'm at the, the doors. That's are the three key issues that at the doors, I, I'm not telling them this is what I want to talk about. I'm asking them first, yeah. tell me what, what you're interested in. And so people are engaged, they're involved, and they want to hear from who's going to be down the hill at the state house. Yeah. And it's, I don't know, it, if, if you can't do that as a politician or running for office, mm -hmm. I just don't understand like why, why you are, do Why it. are you doing it exactly. if you don't want to actually listen to your constituents? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I get it, and I'm born and raised here, obviously, and so for me it's one of those things that's like, I go to many different political fundraisers mm -hmm. and different things, and I've you know worked for lobbyists previously, and I, I get how that all works. Yeah. And it's very much, it can be this whole handshakes, checks, and very old school thing in this state, which, mm -hmm. I mean, I love my state, but at some point, and I am, you know, I am pretty one-sided on it, but at some point we also have to allow for innovation, mm -hmm. and it can't just be who wrote you the check. Right. It has to also come from like, what are your core principles? What are your values? What really needs to change? Or are we gonna live in this little hole forever? And what are the actual people that are within your district? What do they want? What do they want? To me, that's, that's the most important thing, is, is again, connecting with the people who I want to vote. You know, I, I always tell people I'm at the door, I wanna earn your vote. I don't, I'm not begging for it. I'm not yeah. saying, give it to me. I wanna earn it because that, that to me is, it's, it's a privilege in order to, to be able to, to exercise your a, a civic duty to vote. Yeah. I was in the army and I served in the Iraq war. And when I was there, um, I, was, I was doing patrol for their first parliamentary uh, votes. Mm -hmm. And I had to pull a patrols for their ballot boxes, route security to and from uh, a, a, the yeah. a, a, a voting places. And Imagine that where like voting is something you have to be have protected. Right? And, <laughs> yeah. then, and then when I come home, you know, if we have 48% of the people vote, that's a pretty good turnout. I know, it's a little and pathetic. It, it is, right? It's a little and pathetic. so, I mean, I really think we need to get back to what does being civically minded mean, right? Casting yeah, about. Like, I have people say, oh, I voted for this person thinking I'm going to chastise them. I'm just happy they participated in the process. No, it, that's what now I was Now I want say. to try to convince them to vote well, for me. Imagine this. <laughs> imagine this where it's like, at least you voted. Right? I, the rule, I think, has always been like, you don't get to whine unless you actually vote. Yeah. Unless you actually show up and participate, mm -hmm. you don't get to say anything. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, people just live in their own little, I feel like sometimes ignorant bubble of like, I'm just going to whine. It doesn't really matter. And my, my vote, vote doesn't, doesn't count. count. Exactly. And it's so crazy because I mean, just in Idaho alone, we mm -hmm. had just this last uh, city council race. We had in the Eagle uh, race, mm -hmm. uh, it was decided by four votes. Four votes. In That's Twin insane. Falls, we had a ledge race lose by a hundred votes. Um, we saw in Virginia, um, a seat was won by coin flip, and it's That's it's nuts. crazy. So every vote does count, and when we start talking about like how we get people involved, eighteen to twenty four year olds is an enormous age bracket for yeah. youth to vote. But the problem is they only vote about twenty percent of the time. Well, I feel like, and, and I could be completely wrong, or mm. just making this up, but the baby boomer generation is so massive, and I feel like a lot of them actually vote. They vote so high. it's like yeah. you wonder why you know these young people that have all these innovative ideas. It's like you mm -hmm. wonder why nothing's getting done because you're not showing yeah. up. Exactly. This is a whole massive demographic that is constantly showing up right. to voice their opinion. And Whereas 18, 20 year olds is a larger voting demographic, but they vote but they only don't 20 percent. Whereas if you're looking at the 65 and older crowd, mm -hmm. uh, they are showing 65, 70 percent yeah. to the polls. And so you know when we start talking about education issues or you know I can't afford college those issues aren't being talked about because because those who, other people aren't in college exactly <laughs> or going into college that, you know they yeah, yeah. and so it's, it's not important to them anymore yeah and so we need our voices to be able to stand up and again I mean that's why I want to run that's why I want to be able to take those voices and those perspectives you know I wasn't born into to wealth or into privilege but we there's a voice out there that we need to project forward 
and yeah. being able to, to carry the banner. You know, we have a lot of great advocates. People say, I'm for this or I'm for that. You know, we need people who are champions, people who know what it's like not to be, not to be covered by health care, yeah. what it's like not to know where your next meal is going to come from. You know, I mean, um, yeah, I came from a, 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 my dad, he's from a Mexico. Mm-hmm. And he worked really hard to get me to where I'm actually at today. Mm-hmm. Um, but there are times where, you know, we live in fear of one traffic stop. He can be taken away. He can be sent away. Um, not being able to have health care. You know, not knowing where the next meal is going to come from sometimes. Yeah. Those are important. Those are issues that people face every day. And they're not really being talked about. I mean, they're, no. They're, they're giving a nod to like, oh, yeah, it's important. We need to cover people with health care. It's an education. No, we need to placate really people. <laughs> and we need champions, people who have experience everyday Idahoan or even American uh, aspects and being able to speak from a position of authority of this is how it is and, and what can we do to actually change it and yes. to me that that's exciting and, and there's such a huge movement out there right now for people who are wanting to see that nationwide yeah. we are seeing more and more and more people stepping up to the plate and just saying I am tired of being represented by the status quo I'm tired of being represented by the status quo and I mean, that's why I'm challenging a Democratic incumbent, because yeah. I don't want the status quo anymore. No. Yeah, you want to see a significant change in I what's do. going on. You know, and I'm not afraid to bring up the issues. I, I hear sometimes uh, from our current uh, members, we can't bring this up because we can't, it won't even get through the, the door. You're a leader. You get it through the door. You if you don't, you kick the you door can't, down. Yeah, you can't even say that it won't go through the door if you don't even try. Exactly. And, you know, and Did you even knock? Talk about that, right? <laughs> it's like, oh, I don't know. I'm not going to do that. And so, no, I mean, we, we can't be passive about it. Well, you're in politics. I mean, you got to be a pit bull. There's yeah. no, like, well, I just thought I'd get this seat just to, you know, Wouldn't hang out. Wouldn't it be out. great? And, yeah, no. Wouldn't it be I mean, great to have a title? <laughs> I mean, nope. and, and I do want to work across that. And I do want to be able to, to build partnerships. But we still need to have representatives who hold their values true and not just fold when it's tough. If it was easy, everyone would do it, right? Yeah, no joke. And so that's, I mean, that's And hopefully me, that's it's not easy drive. so that not everyone does it. Right? Yeah. Yeah. It's, that's, to me, it's crazy that just the level of, like, the age of our state house to mm-hmm. me is a little bit crazy. Mm-hmm. But I, I see why. I mean, I'm not ignorant. I was born and raised here. I know how this town works. Mm-hmm. But it's also... I don't have any kids, Mm -hmm. so I have to say is like, I don't typically just think of education like off the top of my Mm -hmm. head. I tend to go towards like small business or Mm -hmm. living wage and things like that, but just some of the things you shared with me before about like the amount of prison rates that people have if they're not educated Mm -hmm. properly young uh, and the way that our spending is, whether that's, you know, I mean, I, to me, it's common sense that you wouldn't keep spending money on prison budgets, you would spend it on education. Right. Because that literally is the future. But even with small businesses, I don't own a small business, but you do, and I've met with you a couple of times. Yeah. And I've met, you know, also running for office and, and wanting to, to represent people takes a, a level of curiosity. Mm-hmm. And not just saying, I don't know anything about that, I'm not gonna talk about it. I mean, yeah. being a president of a neighborhood association, I knew nothing about zoning, but in order to, oh gosh, to make right <laughs> to make changes though, as mm-hmm. I had to learn. And I sat down and I wanted to be I wanted to represent my my neighbors and being able to know what I'm talking about instead of just standing with a pitchfork and saying, no, 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 yeah. let's actually use the tools available to make change. And it's been successful. And that's from mm-hmm. small business. It's to, yeah. I'm not a doctor, but I can still talk about uh, health care. You know, I mean, there's so many well, and I think it's also the willingness to learn and educate yourself v- yes. versus I hate when yeah. I go to like, I go somewhere and I'm like, oh, well, this is what we want to change. And I'm like, okay, so what are the ideas? Mm-hmm. Like, what, what is it that you want to do? Yeah. And, but they have no ideas for change. They have yeah. no ideas how to innovate. And it's like, okay, so you're coming to me with a problem, but you don't even have a hint of a solution. And they're not even open to finding it. Like, it's so No, they just, they're it's like, so... walls down, yeah. change this. Okay, yeah. well, how are we going to do that? Right. So yeah. I, I think that it, a lot of things in this, at least this city and mm-hmm. this state, is you have to be able to innovate and change things. Mm-hmm. But a lot of people get so stagnant in what they have going on already that they're just they're just done with it. Yeah, and and that's why I mean we, there is a movement out. People are tired of that. They yeah. are tired of having that status quo, and that's why again we're seeing a movement. Like when I'm at the a, a doors, um, 
people are so excited that one there's a young person show at the door that <laughs> you show up and yeah. they're enjoying that and the people are just really they're focused on that just I'm glad you're here and they're glad to have that conversation and realizing that there is a, a, a disconnect by where they're at in, in their everyday lives and yeah. where where the people who are down at the state they're house, not the only they're ones that yeah, feel it exactly yeah and so i mean it's so question for you yes. if someone does want to get involved whether yeah. that's with you or in any capacity mm-hmm. what what do you think those steps looks like, look like what, what's the best way for them to go about reaching out to somebody or getting involved or yeah. making change what do you think the best <laughs> avenue is that's such a great question because I, what I get a lot from people is, you know, when I ask them why they, they don't vote, it's because I don't know enough about the, who, who's on the ballot or what's going yeah. on. We live in a Google society where people will Google more about what they're going to have for dinner than who's going to represent them That's at so the true. state house. It's and so, so true. Google it. Be able to find out, you know. Um, you can go to my website, johnsonforidaho.com, if you want to volunteer on my campaign. There's a, a, a volunteer uh, slot. There's also, if you want to donate, you know, campaigns aren't cheap. It, they are. Yeah. Uh, they just take money to do that. So there's a donate button. But that's a way you Google. Find out who's in your district. Being able to, to figure out where they're at. And it doesn't even have to be for candidates. Get involved in your neighborhood association. Oh, yeah. Get involved with a, a, a Cub Scout troop. And just um, show up, the, you the know. PTO, the world is run by people who show up. It, it, it sounds yeah. cliche, but it's so it's true. true. It's true. And if you if you just show up to one thing, you know, you don't have to dedicate 15 hours to mm-hmm. volunteer every week. You really just show up for an hour at the food bank, and you make you feel better, and you make a world of difference for everyone. And so there's so many different ways to do that. Um, and I, I'm always encouraging people that yeah. that's how you start your. When I think if you show up to participate in whatever capacity that is, mm-hmm. whether it's like giving back or politically, it's like then you meet other people that yeah. can that you can network with, and I think that's massive. Mm-hmm. And it's like you may find out that you're passionate about something that you never thought you would be passionate right. about, and and then it they're really friendly, like they're not yeah. there to be mean to you. Just show up and they're ask. They're there just like you are. I mean, yeah. they want to be involved. They feel passionate about feeding the hungry, or you know. <laughs> Taking care of dogs at the uh, Humane Society. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of different ways that people can really make a mark in the society and build mm-hmm. a community that we all want to be in. Well, I think for me, it's a lot of like people forget that there's still human interaction. Right. Because we're so behind a screen 24 7. Then yeah. it's like, and that's kind of why I wanted to do the video side of this, even though we kind of just talk to each other, is mm-hmm. there's still human interaction. Like, yeah. I'm doing this because I know you and I like you and you're my mm-hmm. friend. And those are the people that I people that I talk to on a regular mm-hmm. basis. So get out from behind the screen. No more Facebook warriors. I yeah, mean, really, like yeah. don't you come at me from your keyboard because <laughs> I'm gonna take it. <laughs> it's true. No, yeah. it's true. And, and which I mean, do I mean if it's for a good cause, feel free to like share and like and promote and do right. all of those things. But also show up. Yeah. Like participate. Mm-hmm. If you're not participating, then I don't know what you're doing. Yeah. So. Oh, I agree. Well, anything else you'd like to share with us? Let me think. Um, you know, I'll show everybody my card. This, if you see this on your door and you live within my uh, my area, uh, you see this in your door frame. I was there. My and if he's there, be nice to him. He's really great. <laughs> I can take it. If you have hard questions, I can really take it. <laughs> but you know, just it's exciting. And, and the primary is. Oh yeah! Thank you, thank you. Vote yes. for the, the May fifteenth primary. An important note about voting in the Democratic primary is you don't have to be uh, one party or another. You can be. A Republican, be a Democrat, can be independent. Uh, the uh, our primary ballot is open, so you don't have to actually be. You, you don't have either to side you just show up anything. and say, "I want that ballot," and, and you get it. And we have great candidates up and down the ticket. We have a gubernatorial with Polly Jordan and AK. Uh, AJ, not AK, <laughs> AJ Belukov. We have a county commission race yeah. here that is is on fire, and we have people up and down. Uh, our our area that are really running good races out. I'm not doing one out knocking on doors talking to people. Well, I think the other thing that's important to mention Mm -hmm. is if you guys don't show up for the primary, right? then, you know, I mean, there's a lot of good candidates that may not even end up on that later ballot if you don't show up for the primary. It's true. I mean, it's such a small number that every vote really does count. Again, going back to that, I mean, you look at having about 22,000 voters within District 17 and... 
for the Democratic primary, probably have 2,000. Yeah. And that's it. So every one is going to matter. So tell your friends to vote. And vote, and not just in this, vote for school bonds. Vote for mosquito abatement. Vote yeah. for sewer district. All those really And matter. is there somewhere to see all of the things that you'll be voting on so yeah. they can do the Google research before they show yeah. up? Yeah, you can go to, let me see the website real quick. It's uh, idahovotes.gov. You can okay. put in your... Um, you can put in your address and it will pop up and tell you the, okay these are the things that your ballot yeah, will say and that's a place to check also if you're actually uh, registered to register to vote um, okay. and it'll tell you where your polling place is and you can register to vote at your polling place the you day can. Of, right? Idaho is one of seven states that allows for okay. same-day voter reg Registered. so you can okay. show up you just have to have an ID you have to have uh, a piece of mail. There's certain things they don't tell you on it the website you the what you need, address, but okay. you can actually show up the day of, cast your ballot, and participate in the democratic process. And you can do that for any. It doesn't matter if it's a primary, school bond, general election. Um, it's just really important that people start to exercise those uh, civic duties that they have. Yeah. Well, we not really everybody gets to vote, so maybe exactly. you should take advantage of it. it absolutely. Yeah. Well, cool. Absolutely. Well, this was fun. I really this was super it. fun. Yeah, thank you. I'm glad you got to enjoy one of your gummy beers. Yeah, and and I should say, you need if you haven't been down to Lost Grove, you really do need to come here. This is a great place. Best brewery in town. <laughs> and it's in the district. Shameless so. plug. <laughs> <laughs> I have to plug my family. And if you don't know anything about Boise or Idaho, it's not what you know. It's definitely who you know. True. So, well, thank you, Randy. Well, thank you so and much. And thank you, everybody, for watching or listening. And Don't thank forget you. to vote. Don't forget to vote. May 15th primary, and then uh, again, shout out to Argos Productions for hooking us up. Thanks, guys.